Uh, hi, this is Jim Shelberg from the Pin Game Journal, and we're here with Jerry and Dennis of um, Multimorphic, and um, uh, we're going to be talking about their talk uh, at the um, show. Yes, <laughs> yes, we're hitting a multi-game platform pinball machine. Okay. So the machine comes with flippers, it comes with a trough, it comes with a cabinet, it comes with a, a back box, potentially, if customers want one. And we'll change out the upper play field, the dynamic artwork in the LCD that's on the play field, and potentially the translate and side art. Okay, and so the one of the games is going to be themed... Yeah, so we're going to talk about both of our themes here okay. at Texas Pinball Festival. One theme is defined by Dennis. He'll talk about that in a second. The other game is a cosmic kart racing game. It's kind of the, the traditional kart-style racing game that you sometimes see in video games these days. Um, we don't have any artwork for that yet. We're not going to talk too deeply about it. But what's interesting about kart racing is there's a lot of things we can do in pinball to tie into kart racing. And one thing we're going to do that no one else has done before is a networked multiplayer game. We're going to have people who can play against each other right. across the world. If two people have machines, wherever they are, they can connect to each other and play against each other. Oh, cool. Like, similarly, they do video games now, right. but this will be a real game, and the game, wherever, will know what that game did. And that's, that's cool. That's, that's correct. That's, that's We're going to do a demo of that tomorrow. Okay. It's not going to be of the kart racing game. It's just going to be a networked multiplayer demo game. But, yeah, we're going to show that technology off at 2 o'clock on Saturday. All right, that's, so that's game one that's right. of the two-game thing. In game two, Dennis is going to be uh, designing or will design. What, he's going to tell us what that... And that's the big announcement, yes. I guess. Yes. What, what is it? <laughs> it's, well, it's an original theme, so I'm very excited about that. And I worked back and forth with Jerry trying to decide what direction the theme's going to be. And one of the first things I thought of was a zombie game, of course. And um, but there's people working on a lot of zombie games. And I liked space science fiction, and Jerry liked space science fiction. So there we found some common ground. Okay. And I always liked the series of computer games, Space Quest games. Okay. And um, I liked the humor, and, and um, so I thought, well, let's do a... a a space-themed game with with humor in it, science fiction game. So my initial um, start was something from... I started from Space Quest and then moved on. And, and I, so the first thing I did was try to come up with names for the lead character, and I came up with a lot of names based on old science fiction heroes, well, but I would change them around and mix them up, like Flash Rocky and things like that and then I came up with the name um, Flashlight Speed <laughs> okay. kind of influenced by Buzz Lightyear Buzz, right. but different and um, so that was going to be my main character and I, I came up with this storyline that, that Flashlight Speed and his two crewmen uh, were going to crash in the Nevada desert somewhere and they his two crewmen are these two rednecks that he abducted from the swamps of Florida. <laughs> okay. And um, because they were out hunting the swamp ape. And one of the rednecks actually is a retired NASA scientist. Oh, wow. And, and these two guys are based on my brothers. <laughs> so their names are Ronnie Earl and Little Larry. And that's your brother's names. Yeah, right, yeah. And um, where cool. was I? So okay, so they the, the story was they crash in the Nevada desert somewhere, and the and the ship is kind of disc shaped, so it starts rolling. They crash and bounce. It starts rolling. They roll past a sign that says Area 51, top secret. Keep on rolling. Roll past a sign that says Area 52, super top <laughs> secret. And they eventually get to Area 53.1, over the top secret. <laughs> That's cool. And it's so secret, nobody knows about it. And that's where they keep all the crash spaceship parts and okay. stuff. So. They crash, and they get out, and they look, and so Ronnie Earl, being a NASA scientist, is going to help him fix up his ship so they can take off again, and I think they're headed to the planet Viagra, <laughs> where the people are beginning, beginning to rise up against the evil right. dictator. Are they rising up? They're rising I up, see, okay. yes. No pun intended. No, of course not. No, no. Against the evil dictator. You, you don't like any pun at all? No, I never no. do. I know. Risque, so. time. Right. Not time, you. So. And... Um, Rising up against the evil dictator Higgs boson. 
Because nobody's ever seen him, but they know he exists. Although I saw a news report yesterday, they think they found it. Oh, really? Yeah, sure yeah, yeah exactly. and they've seen it. So it's no longer a secret. So that's how I started. And I was coming up with some toys and some playfield features and stuff. And then I realized, wait a minute, our main character should be a female. It's Pinball. Yeah, it's Dennis. So yeah. So I started thinking of names for, for a female main character, and I wanted her dressed in black leather with motorcycle boots and shoulder pads and looking real tough and strong. And um, I came up with the name. I like the name Lightspeed, so I came up with the name uh, uh, Lola. Lisa Lola. Lola Lightspeed. Lola. Lola Lightspeed. And I was telling my wife's niece about this, and she said, Lola Lightspeed, that sounds like a stripper. Lola's not a good name. So that put the bug in my head. and. Uh, Finally came up with the name Lexi. Oh. Lexi is sexy. Yeah. Lexi Lightspeed is the character. Lex, And so um, also on board the UFO is the Swamp Ape, because Ronnie Earl and little, little Larry were hunting the Swamp Ape, and they get too close, so Lexi abducts them, and then she brings the Swamp Ape back on the ship, because Swamp Apes and Bigfoot and Yetis, they're all sent down from UFOs to right. gather biological samples. Everybody knows that, I think. That's why they're only in, in sparsely populated areas where they're seen. 